last chemical reaction we're going to do with alcohols is the halogenation reaction. And um, you're just going to know the general idea behind it, no big details. Um, in lab, we call it the Lucas test. And um, with the halogenation, the tertiary alcohols really react the fastest. The secondary alcohols need a little bit of heat for them to react. Primary don't really react much. You'll see that in lab. But with what happens is that you have an alcohol and then you have a reagent that has a halogen in it. This is a phosphorus trichloride. You could have phosphorus uh, tribromide. And um, if you have three of these guys, each one of them is going to pick up one chlorine. So the OH and the chlorine, they change places. So you end up with a molecule like this. Oh, I saw this right. Here you go. So the only thing you need to know about this is that your hydroxyl group just changes places with your halogen. And you end up having three of these. And um, you end up with your um, the phosphoric acid, or phosphoric acid. But this is, this is what's important. The OH and the halogen just change places. OK, that's the last one. That is halogenation. And like I told you guys, in lab, we call this the Lucas test. All right, so we're done with alcohols, and we're ready to move on to phenols, and then we'll get into the ethers. Phenol is a special type of alcohol. It actually is in a different category than alcohols because a phenol is a benzene ring with an OH attached. This is a phenol. You guys remember when we had a benzene ring with a methyl group, we called it toluene? Well, a benzene ring with an OH attached with a hydroxyl group is a, called a phenol, not a phenyl. Phenyl was when you had a benzene as a substituent on a parent chain. Phenol, O-L, is a benzene with an OH. The difference between the phenol and a regular alcohol is that the phenol is attached to an aromatic ring, and so it is slightly acidic. Okay, alcohols are not acidic, but phenols are slightly acidic. They're not considered strong acids like, you know, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, sulfuric acid. No, those are the strong acids with a very high Ka. Um, this is a weak acid, considered a weak acid but it is considered an acid. Like I said, alcohols are not acidic at all. The reason this is an acid is that this hydrogen ion, remember an acid by definition is something that can donate a proton or donate a hydrogen ion. So this proton or this hydrogen ion can be donated and then the electron gets delocalized over here. So when you show this phenol in water, this is what's going to happen. The hydrogen ion comes in and attaches to water to form the hydronium ion. And then the phenol has a negative charge because the H plus went, left the electron behind. So that's one of the key characteristics of phenol. Phenols are um, um, used in a clinical setting. Um, the only thing that is different about them is mainly that they are acidic. Uh, anything else you need to know about them? I think that's pretty much it, okay? They're very polar because you've got that charge, so they are gonna be more water soluble than um, the regular alcohols because you've got that charge there. Regular alcohol with the same number of carbons. All right. I think that's enough about phenols. Let's move on to ethers. Now, ethers, remember, have an oxygen 
between two R groups. This R group is just the rest of the molecule. So you could have a methyl here, and you could have a methyl here. You could have maybe an ethyl here, and a methyl here. The idea is that you have alkyl groups on either side of the oxygen, and that's what immediately tells you that it's an ether. Of course, there are the lone pairs. We're just ignoring them for now. All right, so let's name ethers um, using common names. For short ethers, you name one alkyl group, then you name the other alkyl group, and then you write the word ether. If the two alkyl groups are exactly the same, you say di whatever ether. Yeah, there's that email sound again. Di methyl ether. So this one needs to be di methyl ether. If the two alkyl groups uh, are different, this is an, an ethyl and this is a methyl, you alphabetize them. E ethyl comes before M methyl, so you write ethyl methyl ether. This way of naming, this is common, common names. Okay, now I'll teach you the IUPAC name. With the IUPAC naming of ethers, you get you name them like they're alkanes, and then the ether group becomes a substituent. So let me show you. And you usually use that when you get longer ethers. So let's say I have this. All right. So I've got this long parent chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Long parent chain. So my parent is a hexane. And then this is a substituent attached to the parent. We call this an alkoxy group. So you take the alkyl name and you drop the YL and you throw in OXY. So this would have been methyl, you get rid of the YL, and then you put an oxy, so it's a methoxy. So this would be 2-methoxy hexane. Okay, that's it. Let's try another one. All right, line drawing here. You recognize that the longest parent chain is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's gonna be named as an alkane. It's octane. This is a substituent and this is a substituent. What is this substituent? All right, if you recognize that this is three carbons but it's hooked up from the middle carbon, Remember, three carbons was propyl, but if it's hooked up from the middle carbon, it's isopropyl. We're going to get rid of the YL and put in the term oxy. So this is an isopropoxy. And this is a bromo. B comes before I. We're going to number it left to right because the substituents are closer to this side. So 2-bromo, 3-isopropoxy octane. Okay, now if you have an ether and an alcohol in the same molecule, you have to name it as an alcohol and then this is a substituent. So we'll Number it here, left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Why are we numbering it left to right? Because the alcohol has priority, so you give it a lower number. This is just a plain old substituent. This is a methoxy substituent. 
So you're going to write down 5-methoxy-2-hexanol. Why the 2? Because we have to tell everybody where the hydroxyl group is. All right. And then one little thing I forgot to mention earlier, if you have a double bond and an alcohol in the same molecule, so let's say you've got this thing. Alcohols take priority over double bonds. So, so far alcohols take the highest priority, okay? And you're gonna have to t name it not an alkane all, it becomes alkene all. So let's count the number of carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we didn't have the double bond, it would be a heptanol. But now it's a heptene all. We have to tell everybody where the double bond is and where the OH group is. The double bond is at carbon six, so we can write six dash heptene dash Two dash O. Students always freak out when I break apart a name, but it's really the only way that you can tell everybody where each one of these are. Uh, the six refers to the ene. Notice there's no E at the end here. We got rid of the E because we're still finishing up the name. Okay. And that's the main important stuff from this chapter. There's a 